In Star Wars The High Republic Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older, the Nihil have been sighted on Corellia after a bodyguard goes missing protecting his client. Meanwhile, the events of the Fallen Star are on the horizon, as Phase 1 of the High Republic draws to a close. Midnight Horizon splits its focus on two distinct groups. The first is Crash, a new character who is the head of a bodyguard firm on Corellia. The book does a good job at establishing her quickly so she can interact with already established characters. It's also pretty good at fleshing out her world, her career and the many pressures and issues she faces on a day to day basis. Although there are far too many named characters associated with Crash, meaning that when things pick up, it's tough to keep track of just what's happening and more specifically, who is who. It's also slightly disappointing that her career is the most interesting and relevant part of this character's life. She does very little beyond that and her ties to Corellia could prevent her from being seen in future novels, unless the writers come up with a great excuse to get her off planet. The other group of focus is that of the Jedi, headed to Corellia to look into the potential Nihil threat. This group consists of Reef Silas, his master Comac, Cantam, Zine and Ram. Reef continues to be the most engaging and interesting of the bunch, but he's very much a supporting character this time around. There are hints at greater, more significant things to come for him, and I'm very interested to see just where he goes from this book onwards. Cormac continues to be a vague character, a character with a crisis and a struggle. The problem is that the book never overtly states what's wrong with him, and even the character himself is unsure of the answer. This means that so much of what he is going through is confusing and unclear, with far more questions than answers. It doesn't always make for the most compelling or engaging of mysteries, especially when nobody seems all that interested in discovering the answers. Kantam is finally given a big moment to shine in this book. They are a very likeable and well developed character, thanks to flashback elements exploring their origins and backstory with Yoda and romance. Notably this character is non-binary, that's a really cool and interesting aspect of this character that sets them apart from just about everyone else around them. But also notably is that this is never mentioned or brought up, beyond the book using they, them, their pronouns. Perhaps that's a good thing because it normalises it, but there's an opportunity to make a statement or send a message or add more depth that is being overlooked without some sort of mention of it or its origins. Ram meanwhile does not fare as well as his counterparts. In this book, Ram is exploring comedy and sarcasm. He's attempting to better himself which is an interesting idea that isn't fully explained. Last I saw Ram, this did not seem like a major issue for him, except that he was a bit of a loner who preferred machines and engineering to people. The result here, by pushing that further, is that he is more annoying than endearing, and his failed exploration of humour is never all that funny, despite being played for laughs. He's almost becoming the Jar Jar Binks of the High Republic, a title nobody wants him to have. In addition, Every character around Ram reacts in a highly optimistic and positive way to the character, which comes across as forced, odd and bizarre. It's highly unbelievable and unnatural. The final character of note is that of Yoda. This is the first novel of the High Republic in which Yoda makes an appearance. The author manages to capture his voice and mannerisms incredibly well, doing a good job at adding some youthful elements that sets him apart from the Yoda we all know and love. At the same time, this is still an all-powerful and wise Yoda, and whenever he's in the book, it's nearly always an emotional experience, the characters around him, as well as the reader. In terms of the story, there is a political element that is touched upon at several points. It involves unions and strikes, and it's clearly very important to the world and the characters of that world. The problem is that it takes place away from the main characters of this book, only getting mentioned here and there. The result is a highly important story point that is often vague and unclear because it feels so distant despite its importance. The story gets off to a slowish start, with the majority of the first half of the book focused on getting the characters all in one place on Corellia. This means that for much of the story, nobody knows what's going on or why. And that's fine if we the reader can fill in the gaps, but we're only ever given information when the characters get it. So a lot of the first half of the book is devoid of mystery or tension because it lacks detail. 
As the story progresses, the action and excitement amps up, leading to a very satisfying conclusion that had me smiling all the way through it. Sadly, the villains of this book are very disappointing. Much of their antics take place off screen. We never really see their perspective and they only pop up here and there. In many ways, they're thugs or henchmen with names, with little to them beyond being Nihil. Finally, some of the themes of this book concern love and relationships, specifically the rights and wrongs of these things, especially for the Jedi. The book does a good job of bringing up these themes and then sending out messages surrounding them, but it is eye roll inducing to see so many characters going through similar things in very coincidental ways. Star Wars The High Republic Midnight Horizon is sadly the worst entry into the High Republic series thus far. In many ways, it feels like an excuse to explain why certain characters were not featured in The Fallen Star. There is little story here that feels relevant to the larger arcs going on, few revelations and even less character development. Luckily, it isn't all that long and it does have fun and exciting moments, particularly in the second half.